Unbelievable. India, 2007. Well, sex determination tests, very fortunately, are forbidden in India. Not so, however, in the United Kingdom, where several women of Indian origin have reportedly been finding out the sex of their fetuses and then traveling to India to carry out abortions. The end result, a study by Oxford, clearly shows a skewed sex ratio among the Indian population in the United Kingdom. The growing Indian population in the UK, but apparently it's an unequal growth. A recent study at Oxford by Dr. Sylvie Dubok shows a skewed sex ratio amongst Indians in the UK. While there is an imbalance in India, in the UK such a skewed ratio is abnormal. The study shows, for children born to India-born mothers between 1990 and 2005, the sex ratio was 1,040 to 1,080 boys for every 1,000 girls. In cases where there is a third child, the ratio is even more skewed, 1,130 boys for every 1,000 girls. Most plausible explanation for, for this trend um, seems to be uh, sex selective abortion that has been used by uh, a small minority of uh, families where, uh, in which the mother is born in India and, uh, and these to, uh, to ensure having boys. In UK, sex determination tests are common and advertised openly. Doctors feel it helps detect genetic abnormalities in the fetus and gives parents more options on how to deal with them. In such a scenario, abortion based on the sex of the fetus would go almost unnoticed in the larger agenda of UK's National Health Service. Whether the National Health Service could do something about it, it's very difficult because the National Health Service is very open. When a woman is pregnant in this country of any origin, if she wants to know the sex of her child, it's easily available. She can go walk into the antenatal clinic. She will have ultrasound at about between 12 to 20 weeks, and the sex uh, could be known. But when it comes to aborting the fetus, if it's a girl, the National Health Service, of course, will not accept that. The average Indian woman born in Britain is usually well educated, but her family may still hold on to values they brought with them from the subcontinent decades ago. Values that are fueled by television serials from India that are now easily available on satellite television here. Rani Atma came to England and qualified as a lawyer in 1971, but changed course to become a social worker, helping Asian families adjust to life in England. Her Asian Family Counseling Service has centers all across the country, helping families deal with all kinds of issues, including marriage and children. Most of the pressures are the fact that the daughter-in-law is expected to behave like a traditional uh, um, traditional woman but I know somebody who had five daughters and he continued to want to have a son he just uh, at which point the, there was a lot of pressure on, on, on the wife and there was much unhappiness in the family he did have a son but after the son he had another daughter and then he decided that that was it so he's got six daughters one son. But th that was one case where every time the wife was pregnant, she would come and talk about, you know. They didn't used to go to find out beforehand whether it was going to be a, 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 a girl child. And I think if they had, she might have had an abortion. But the pressure was there. Rani feels the Indian girl child is finding her place in the UK getting herself educated and becoming a professional, standing tall among her Western counterparts. But unfortunately, those who want a gender-based abortion don't go to counsellors like Rani. Instead, they travel to India, where despite strict laws and campaigns against female feticide, it is a facility that seems to be easily available. This research study is a warning sign, not just for British Indians, but the NHS as well. The NHS will continue to offer sex determination tests within pregnant women. And it is only education that will solve the problem of female infanticide within the British Indian community. In London, with Akhilesh Patel, Rachna Prasad, NDTV.